Hi YouTube family, welcome back to today's video. We are going to be doing a few tips and tricks that I thought that you would really enjoy seeing. These are ones that I really haven't even mentioned even when I was doing tutorials before. So as I've been going along and learning more things myself, I wanna pass those on to you. But they're also things that are really fun and kind of will save you money in the long run because you don't have to go out and buy another product. So let's do get into the video. But before we do, please subscribe, like, hit the bell icon, all those fun things. My social media is down in the description box if you want to follow me there. Okay, what we're going to start out with is something that um, is kind of trending right now, which is a metallic eyeliner. If you like metallic eyeliners, but you're like, I don't want to go out and spend money on something that may or may not be around next year for a trend and you're thinking but I want to give it a try so I want to show you guys how easy it is to make a metallic liner with what you have at home okay the first thing we're going to start with is just your regular felt tip pen this one is from essence and so you know you make your line on your eye like so and then all you're going to do is you're going to take one of your metallic eyeshadows this one is the saharan palette from Juvia's Place. I'm gonna take this light blue right here, and it's kind of actually a tealy light blue, and that's dried down, but I'm gonna go right over top of it, and what's gonna happen is you can clean that up, and what's gonna happen is you will immediately get a, a metallic liner. Now this one in the light that I am right now, this because it had a green shift, it's looking very green, but it's so cool. So what you do is if you want to keep it precise, you just put it on any sort of a brush and you put it on precisely that way. You could do this with any felt tip liner you have. So if you have a brown, if you have a slate, whatever, but it's better to do it with the felt tip. It works a little bit better. You can do this with any color that you like. My suggestion is though, make sure that you stick a little bit lighter because what's going to happen is as you're doing it it is actually going to shift the look of it a little bit but more than anything if you get too dark you're going to have that liner look really really dark my next tip i have put in a lot of videos before but it is to use the nyx multitasking mixing medium i don't know if i've ever put this in an actual video where i was showing you tips and tricks but this mixing medium can make a waterproof eyeliner it can make a liquid lip it can do just about anything you want it to with eyeshadow um, you can do this with blushes too if you want to you can do it with highlighters if you want to too But it pretty much just makes anything that you do have super lasting power to the point of being waterproof This is what I wear almost every time I do an eyeliner I hardly ever buy eyeliners anymore because I really truly can get any color I want to out of this little tube so you're just going to use a teeny tiny drop of it um, and when I say tiny, I mean tiny. Hopefully you can see that. And then you're gonna take a pencil brush. This is a little bit more of a fluffy pencil brush. Then you're gonna dip it into whatever color you wanna work with. So I've got purple on today, but I don't have the perfect purple um, eyeliner to go with it or something like that that I want or I'm doing a neutral look, but I want a pop of teal on my bottom lashes. So you take that and you roll it into the mixing medium and then you automatically get a very waterproof, this is gonna be smudgy because of this brush, but it, you guys will kind of get the idea. You're gonna get a smudged out, waterproof looking line. So that's it if you just did a very light dusting into the powder. Now that you can keep going into the powder and picking up more powder, I would be careful to only work in a corner of your powder because you know how powders get if you get too much water into them or too much liquid into them. And then you you can just you know darken it up as you need to so there I've darkened it up now what's gonna happen that's gonna dry down and you are going to have a fabulously beautiful all day long liner that you can just use for anything you want to I would go in after that and make sure you clean that brush because it will get stiff with that mixing medium on it so just an FYI go in and clean that brush right away with a wipe or a tissue or something and then the other thing is is if you want a, a co lip color that you are thinking about I you know I want to try this lip color I want to try that lip color but you don't 
want to go out and spend the money and then have to, you know, all these lip colors. So take a little bit of it again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this color right here, which is this really bright, bright, super bright fuchsia color, which I think is so pretty. But I'm just going to put it on my finger. You can use a lip brush if you want to. And then again, I'm just going to dip it into that um, mixing medium. And then I would just go across my lips. So there would be the lip color and it will be like a liquid lip. It will stay all day long. You will have that lasting power in there. A little trick with your lips though, dab. Do a lot of dabbing if you, if you want to. Um, and you can definitely make your own custom lip colors um, from any of the shadows that you have. I would suggest that you stick to um, a little bit more of a buttery formula on your shadows. Instead of using something that's more powdery, the buttery, the more buttery, the better on those, just so you guys know that one too. Okay, there's two more things that I wanna to talk to you guys about about your eyeliner. If you have problems with you know getting raccoon eyes or eyeliner bleeding, there's two things you can do with that. Another one is to take a pretty stiff pencil brush. This one is actually my little smudger brush that I got from Morphe. Take your eyeliner, put that down, and even though that might not be a waterproof, you can go down into a color that matches it very closely, and then you just dip into that, and then you just trace right on top of it. And when you do that, what's gonna happen is it's not only going to help keep it on there, but you're also going to get a little bit more of a smudgy line, which actually does help in the softness of your eye look. So if you want to try color, but you're thinking it's just too stark, then you can kind of smudge it out. Also, let me tell you what this brush is. It's the M168. I like this brush because it's it's little, it's, you know, squat, squatty, and it's really thick and dense. And so I can do all the smudging that I want to with it. And that really does help soften up your look too. And if you want to wear a color on the bottom, it helps to soften that too and not quite be so stark. Okay, but let's say that you've tried that and nothing works. I have a little tiny compact that I got as a sample from Clinique. And I want you to grab just a fluffy blending brush. This one is the Morphe M330. You guys, I'm not stuck on Morphe. I just, I bought a lot of them when I was first um, starting out in YouTube and I just, I haven't gotten rid of them because they have nothing's ever happened to them. So you're going to, you know, dust up a lot of that powder, kick it off like you normally do, and then go very, very lightly right under where that is. So you're tracing on it still, you know, you're getting a little bit of powder on there still, but you're also getting underneath the powder right underneath here. I'm going to just do it on mine so that you can definitely hold that in place. I get a lot right out here at the side of my eye where it kind of will during the day, I'll notice that it will kind of, you know, bleed a little bit out there. And so I do that a lot right there. It's nice because even though a lot of times I don't set my concealer with powder, this isn't like going to go all over and make me look all cakey, but it's kind of more along the lines of being kind of precise and just dusting some translucent powder right on top of your eyeliner to keep it in place for the day. So now switch over a little bit to back to lips. You can take any of your highlighters. It doesn't matter what they are. It doesn't matter if it's an eyeshadow. It doesn't matter if it's an actual highlighter, whatever. If you want to have a more multi-dimensional lip, you just stick your finger into that highlighter and just tap it on the middle of your lip and on the top. Now, what that immediately does is makes a mess and makes you look all weird. No, what it immediately does is it makes that uh, part of your mouth or the very middle, I can't talk and do this at the same time, the very middle of your mouth look a little bit more pouty. And what happens is you're actually going to immediately feel like you have a liquid lip on because it's gonna be, have that powder. That powder will have melded with whatever lip gloss or lipstick you have on. So then take your other finger, a dry finger, and just kind of blend everything together. Now, if you don't want to leave it like that, just pop on some gloss on top of it, a clear gloss. And now you have the multi-dimensional look that's all glossy and your pout looks really good. So that is how you get a metallic lip with not without having to buy new lipstick also. Okay, you guys, this next trick I kind of came up with out of being an older woman and necessity, I really noticed my hands and how my hands feel like they really show my age. And so lately, not only have I been pampering my hands more, I've been using my retinol on my hands 
all of my skincare, I make sure I push up my hands and make sure I do it all over my hands. So I'm noticing that my age spots are going, but my hands still, um, I don't think that I'm dehydrated, but my hands still look dry throughout the day and it bugs me. It's just one of those things. So I kind of found a little trick and I hope it helps you guys too. If you take your hand lotion, I just put some hand lotion on. So take your hand lotion and rub it in. If you do have a primer that is more on the hydrating side, but you're like not really enjoying it, it on your skin because personally I need the pore smoothing and the you know the texture smoothing and so I've been using this honey do me I got this it's fine as a primer there's nothing wrong with it but I've been using it in a little bit of a different way so I will take the honey do me it has this little spatula on here and I'll just put a drop on each side of my hands and the hydration from that is so good you guys it's really really good it doesn't really have any properties of like having any silicone or anything in it but then i'll grab a, just a regular primer this one is the rimmel lasting finish breathable primer and i'll take and i'll just put a little drop of that on each of my hands and I'll rub that in on top of it. Now what happens is because you've just put the moisture on, then you've put a little bit more moisture of a moisturizer of a primer on, then your hands have just a smooth, beautiful, plumped up look during the day. No, it doesn't last all day because we do wash our hands, but I will carry just a just a hydrating primer in my purse and I'll put that on really quickly and it really does seem to hold my lotion in a lot better. That's just a little side tip, something that I've been trying a lot lately. Okay, eyeshadow primer. This doesn't just have to be for eyeshadow. I'll tell you what I've been using it for during these hot summer months. I have been using my eyeshadow primer to keep my foundation on my nose, my chin, right here in the crevices where it wears away and breaks apart. And then also right here where I have big pores on my cheeks and up here. So basically kind of the T-zone a little bit. I just take a little bit, I tap it between two fingers, my two ring fingers, and then I tap it across my nose and wherever I feel like during the day, my foundation will rub off. And I'm telling you guys, this really works. I hadn't thought about it before. I know that some people said that the monostat cream or something like that will really act as a really good primer if you're into really, you know, warm climate, but this does the trick too. And you don't run the risk of any of the other ingredients. So this is really good if you're having problems with the foundation rubbing off of your nose. All right, that's everything you guys. I hope that you did enjoy this little um, tips and tricks that I have found recently and I hope that they are some that really kind of help you and keep you going during these warm summer months. So you guys all have a great day. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. I appreciate that so much. Catch y'all in my next video. I love you. Bye-bye.